little walk in the Idle Valley Nature Reserve and we found some sheep grazing in the uh, undergrowth. Oh look, there's a little black one here. Hello fella. Oh, that's a ram. Oh, ram you. Hey, handsome devil. Anyway, carry on. So this field, years ago, uh, we used to walk over this. Over there is a place called Wetlands Nature Reserve, just about there. And over there is a village called Suttoncombe Lound. And in between the two was a trout and salmon lake. And we used to come at night with uh, glow-in-the-dark night lights whipped onto a hook and uh, poach the trout, rainbow trout and brown trout out of the lake. Just, uh, just doing there. I'll see if I can put a geolocation on the video and you'll be able to zoom in on it and uh, find out exactly where I mean on Google Maps. Good morning ladies and gentlemen, welcome along to the vlog. We're in the brewery this morning after a beautiful walk around Idle Valley Nature Reserve. And uh, just while I've got the shot behind me, you'll notice up there that, uh, oh I can't zoom on this angle, I'll just switch the camera. You'll notice up there that we have all the tanks full of beer. Not all those numbers are correct mind you. Nothing's as low as 10.03, 10.04, or yellow's also wrong, orange even. But anyway, yes, as you can see, all the tanks are full. And that is because we've been brewing like mad in order to get some cans out to you guys. So initially, we were going to put together the 4-4 can series. And um, yeah, I put a video out last week about what went wrong with this fermenter leaving a bit of a odd taste in there and also getting the pH wrong and I also got the pH or the volumes wrong on the video I was editing that video at home and people pointed out that I'd said 70 mil when indeed it was a 7 mil syringe yes they're correct here is the exact syringe but as you can tell either way I know I got my numbers wrong twice there. I think the lesson that we need to carry away from that video is that I got my numbers wrong, okay? So that best bitter did actually make it into can. Here it is. But I don't think it is worth consuming personally. In fact, I think it's a little bit homebrewy. So that's probably down to the plastic fermenter, I believe. So we've also got a Got an IPA in here as well. I've not actually tried this, but I'm not going to can it. I've decided to move away from that simply because I don't want to put any beer out there that I think is substandard. So, if we make any more beer on this kit for can, I will be investing in some stainless steel fermenters before we do that. So, this is going to sit idle for a while. In fact, you heard it here first, if anybody wants to make me a cheeky offer on this kit, then I might sell you it. Hey, eh? We could put it on a pallet and ship it to you, anywhere in the UK. <laughs> but I'm saying that simply because we are rapidly outgrowing the kit that we've got here. So I think we're going to, at some point, going to have to look at upgrading this 500 litre brewery to something closer to a 2000 litre brewery because at the moment I don't have enough time to be brewing four days a week and uh, as you can see we've already filled these tanks this week and we were meant to be putting beer into can so I could empty these tanks over here so I can brew next week but unfortunately 
through a small admin error. We ordered three pallets of cans. There's one there, there's one there, and there's one over here, as you can see. So, yeah, about six or seven thousand cans. But, yeah, quite unfortunately, they're 330s, not 440s. So, they're going to have to be exchanged. They're going back. It wasn't our fault, so it's not costing us anything. It just means that our canning schedule has had to be put back now uh, until probably next week. So I was hoping to hit the target of 4-4 can in October. In fact, I've even gone ahead and printed the labels, look, the amber rails out already. 4-4 can, American amber rail, 6.2% October 2020. Okay, so that is the new can design and everything else and we've also got porter plum porter and coconut pale ale all going into can as well but of course we're gonna have to put them back now also uh, we've got some new labels that have come in for the vacant gesture and if I come round here I'll show you the designs of the others so this beauty, and it is a beauty, is the 4-4 can for the plum porter. And then over here, this is going to be the coconut pail. I really do like that uh, design actually. I've done all these designs if anyone's curious. Behind the plum porter, we have Harrison's porter. So that's also coming out at 6.5%. And then we've got some new proof of concept labels here so uh, we filled a load of cans with vacant gesture a couple of weeks back they've completed their conditioning now and they're in the cold room but what I did when I was labeling them was use up the last of the old labels and then move on to the new ones so it's the same batch with two different label designs on. It'll have the same batch code on on the label if you get one of these or two of, you know, one of each because it is the same batch of beer. The only difference is the label that's gone on the outside. So we've kept the batch because the batch code that is there to trace the product, not the label. And that's the product that we need to trace. Anyway, that's where we are, folks, with 4-4 can this week. And, uh, I would really like to be putting this porter into can today. Here's a look at some numbers if you're interested. Uh, but unfortunately, because the cans have arrived a little bit backwards or the wrong size, then that means indeed we can't put them into can until the 440s arrive. But what you can do while you're waiting is... Uh, jump across onto the website harrisonsbrewery.com and there you will find all four of these recipes available for free or if you're so inclined a small three pound donation uh, and you can download these recipes on a beersmith bxsm file or bsxm file or a pdf it comes together with both in a little zip folder and you can brew these beers at home yourself uh, so if you can't wait until they're available and released on the website, then you can get the recipe and start brewing your own. So it's going to be a couple of weeks before the coconut and everything else is ready to go onto the website. So we may miss the launch date by a week. We shall see. But either way, you're going to get these beers online in October. And then, if I come across here, you'll notice that we use... Uncle Roy's natural plum essence for our plum porter. Come on, uh, camera, stop dicking me around. So whilst I was on Uncle Roy's website, I was having a little bit of a browse at all of the other natural flavorings that they make because this stuff is absolutely on the money. It doesn't taste ar artificial, artificial, and. Uh, it really does work with beer. So I decided we're gonna make a few experiments this week. 
or do a few experiments. So I'm going to take this lot home and I'm going to be uh, inoculating some beer with them uh, at my own leisure and I might film it if I get a uh, chance or I'm so inclined but what we'll be doing is tasting beer with some of these other flavourings in there to see if indeed there would be viable alternatives uh, as we move forward and try to make a few other interesting beers so where do we start? well maybe if I move this Stanley knife out of the way we can have a look at this one Uncle Roy's Chocolate Essence so that's probably worth a little bit of a punt that might be very nice indeed here we've got Uncle Roy's Black Cherry so I was thinking maybe in a porter for these beers that might work nicely and then maybe a Hefeweizen with Uncle Roy's Raspberry Essence that could be another winner another porter uh, contestant over here with the chocolate orange and then we've got peach pineapple they could perhaps go into an IPA or a pail along with mango maybe uh, or indeed we can try and up the coconut flavour of the coconut IPA with this coconut essence or try to emulate Tiny Rebels Marshmallow Porter uh, what's it called? I can't remember what it's called now. Stay puffed with this marshmallow essence. Anyway, all this lot, all these essences, because they are made from natural fruit, they're extracted with ethanol and CO2, I believe. Um, and the ingredients are basically uh, monoprop glycol, ethanol, and the extract. They're vegan they're allergen free everything else all of the above and uh, they're quite beer friendly in terms of adding them to a recipe and uh, changing the taste of the beer without making it too artificial so we're going to give this a whirl anyway i'm hoping it works it'll be another string to our bow so uh, you know stay tuned maybe in the next few days you might see a video come out of me having a play with said essences so we finally come home. Chance, hello. You're a star. No? Okay. So yeah, we are home. Reggie's outside. What are you doing, young man? Oh, Reggie pup. You are a nutter. Look at this little nutcase. What do you want, young man? <gasps> He's off. So... Gemma and I have spent 45 minutes to uh, an hour looking at tiles to uh, tile the front of the pub. Uh, I forgot to grab any footage of it. I'll have to show you on the next video. Uh, but all the paint's flaking off. Uh, it's looking tired, obviously. Nobody's taking care of it. Through lockdown, because nobody was actually in the pub. I was in the brewery, but not in the pub. So I think it's ready for a redesign. We made a mistake initially in putting gold lettering on a grey background. You can't really see it very well either. You might have noticed from some images that are on the internet or from other people's videos. So we're going to completely redo the front of the pub because now we're beginning to get a reputation for fine dining and fantastic ales it only makes sense that it should look the part as well so we're going to have to put a little bit of effort into sprucing up the facade of the of the pub but until then folks uh, that's what we've done this afternoon and uh, that's going to wrap it up for today's vlog so nice to see you all again. Keep your pecker up and uh, we'll see you on the next one. From, yes, a wonderfully sunny day in Retford. I don't lie.